Hello, I'm Stefano Tempesta, Vice President of Engineering at EF Education First. And now I'm recording this video from our Bangalore office in India. In this video, I'm presenting code samples and best practices for building solid SharePoint application in MVC. What is solid? So the principles of solid are guidelines that can be applied to software development to improve the readability and maintainability of software applications. So in this video, I want to explore a few of these best practices and design patterns for developing NVC applications that connect to a SharePoint server and comply with the five solid principles. If you have ever checked in a cheap hotel, you may have found something like this, a hair dryer that is connected directly to the wall or to the unit and cannot be removed. In the software engineering practice, this is equivalent to writing large classes of objects that perform several operations, often with strong dependency on other types. For example, Assuming that we are writing an application for registration of students to university course, we may be tempted to define a big course and the enrollment process in a single class. As you notice, this class is actually effective and gets to the point given our current requirements. However, as our business model extends, we immediately encounter some limitations. What if the university wishes to offer online courses in addition to traditional classroom-based ones? The principle of single responsibility teaches us to keep our object as simple and nimble as possible. Irrespective of what design methodology you go for, limiting the scope of classes in your application increases readability and maintainability of your software. Let's talk about the open and closed principle. That is open to extension, closed to change. As simple as that. So simply put, it means that you should not be forced to make changes to your classes every time you want to add capability to your application, but rather extend this functionality by adding something around or instead of the base class. So the options are class extensions, or programming by contract interface and binding the interface to a concrete implementation that's also a principle of the dependence injection or working with some patterns for example the composite pattern or the decorator design pattern the composite pattern for example in respect of the single responsibility principle we have separated the functionality of registration and waitlist management and have defined the following two interfaces for each service, the I registration service and the I waitlist service. Now, we want to combine both functionalities into a composite object, say for ease of execution. Although, rule of thumb, use this pattern with moderation. You may end up in tangled code very easily. The decorator design pattern is used to add a functionality around an existing object. In our case, we want to check that the person registering a student to a course is authorized to do so, and upon successful enrollment, notify the student. Security check and notifications are two typical cross-cutting concerns that find their place in AOP, aspect-oriented programming. Asking for explaining the solid principles is a typical question during interviews for a software engineering position, and when it comes to the L, I see most candidates struggling even with the pronunciation of the name of the American scientist and professor Barbara Liskov. The Liskov substitution principle says that similar objects, or better, objects deriving from the same definition or implementing the same contract can be replaced without causing interruption of service on either end of the connection. Entire books have been written about the principle of inversion of control and its implementation via the dependency injection design pattern. Modern software engineering cannot escape adopting a technique for avoiding object dependency and providing a centralized location for object composition. 
that can be done manually or by adopting a probe at the eye container. A few .NET frameworks uh, assist uh, and can help implementing the dependency injection pattern in your applications, as you can see now on screen. I would love to provide the samples for each of them. But you know, principle of use of and syntax are very similar. So I'll stick to Ninject for the sake of our university application. And now it's time to introduce MVC and SharePoint in the mix. In our solution, we want to connect our MVC application to a SharePoint server backend. We use the C Sharp object model of SharePoint, available on NuGet in the Microsoft.SharePoint.Client package. The SharePoint system exposes a client context that allows connection to a SharePoint server from the MVC application. And as we have uh, learned in the video before, we are not hard coding the dependency to SharePoint in our controllers. Rather, we will use Ninject to define the dependency in the object composition root of the application. In the MVC controller, let's make an example of a course action that is accessible by the route uh, course slash ID and displays the course detail page for the course identified by the ID parameter. A few things worth noticing here. There is a reference to a local context that exposes the method find for retrieving an instance of an instructor led course class in this case. Context is a reference to the SharePoint client context and is built with an inject a bit more in a moment. There are two ways of injecting dependencies in this case by providing the dependency in the constructor. So that is a constructor injection. The dependency is passed as a parameter to the constructor of the controller or by property injection. The dependency is assigned to a property of the controller and then used internally. Different schools of thought exist on which method is more appropriate and each of them has pros and cons. Good news, whatever strategy you decide for dependency injection, our DI container of choice, Ninject, supports both. The use of a DI container helps maintaining a centralized location for setting all the dependencies and then inject them at runtime in the consuming object. The central location is called the composition root. So, how does Ninject work? The Ninject framework works around two main classes, the Injection Container and the Dependency Resolver. The Injection Container represents the entry point for the DI engine to resolve dependencies. By programming uh, by interface, we have built our application with a number of services for registration, waitlist management, as well as abstract the reference to the SharePoint client context. Now it's time to specify the concrete class that implements the interface and bind them in the dependency resolver of Ninject. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any further questions or doubts or fears about the solid principle, Please feel free to reach me on my own blog www.tempesta.space. Thank you for watching. Ciao.